Praise the Lord. Amen. Give it up for Jesus. Ooh, he's so good. He's so good. And thank you, VJ, for leading us in worship. That was awesome. It's so, it's so great. It's so beautiful. It's so awesome to praise the Lord. There's freedom in praising the Lord. And, and God is so good. God is so good. It's, it's all about God's goodness. It's all about God's love. And just receiving his love, receiving his love, and receiving his love, and then sharing his love, giving his love. I remember when I started learning about the faith, and I, I learned about God's love, I just thought, like, oh, yeah, God's love is, is just to love. I'm just to love. I'm just to, like, give of myself and love. But I didn't realize, wait a minute, I'm supposed to also receive God's love, too. Um, and if you look... If you think of the cross, Jesus on the cross, that's the ultimate sign of love right there. You can just, if you wear a cross or so, you could just, you could just think of like wearing a big heart. God's love right there. This is God's love. This is God's love for us, that he give his life for us. That he, it says no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. Who? He calls us his friends. You know, we're, we're not his subjects or his slaves. You know, we're his friends. He wants to be that close with us. He wants to know us as a friend. You know, I go on the streets and I talk to people on the streets all the time. And I'm like, like yeah, tell me who's the closest person towards you, to you, you know. I'll, I'll talk to some random guy on the streets. And, I'll, and, and he'll be like, oh, you know, um, my mom or my dad or my, my best friend. Or, and it's like... That God wants that closeness with us. God wants that closeness, but even closer, even deeper, you know? He wants that closeness with us. He wants us to know him in that intimately, that closely. And we got to press in. We got to, it's a, you know, our purpose in life is to know God, to love God, and to serve God. So, you know, sometimes we, we might not know God, you know? We, we're not sure, so we, we have to read the Bible. We have to read Scripture. You know, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. I remember um, about last year, I, was, I, was, I went to this conference, and I would read scripture, but it would just be like the daily readings before, and I'd read here and there. But I went to this conference, and this guy was, this guy was, was preaching, and he was so inspiring. He was so inspiring. Um, I'll just share about a little bit of his testimony. He was, doing, he was doing drugs since he was like young age at 13, an atheist grown up, um, and then, you know, in his 20s, you know, he's dealing drugs, doing drugs, living a crazy life. He got an accident. He got an accident. It was, the accident was so bad. He flew out the window, flew out, the, flew out of his car. But not only that, like, his, all his clothes were ripped off. And the, the, they found him. The, the, the police found him. And they took him to the hospital. And he was just, they were, the doctors were just like, oh, we're just waiting for him to die. You know, they couldn't do anything because all, everything was bleeding internally. Everything was bleeding internally, and they were just waiting for him to die. And, um, and so he didn't know Jesus at all. Um, none of his friends told him about Jesus. And, and so all of a sudden, like, like a light came into his room. He, he was saying, like, oh, this wasn't a vision or so. He was like, a light came into my room. And all of a sudden, like, a river came from that light. And there was a guy in white clothing. And he, he went beside my bed and stopped there for a little bit. And then he started washing himself in the river. And then he heard, then after that was all gone, he, but he heard, like, you know, follow, something about, like, follow Jesus. And after that, like, the next day he was completely healed. He was completely healed. And so um, he, uh, he, 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 uh, he, the, the doctors said, all right, well, you, you got to go. We can't do nothing, you know, nothing for you. You're, you're completely healed. There's nothing wrong with you. And so, but from that, from that journey right there, like he, he went home and he started, um, he told his dad how he, how he, how he encountered, you know, he just felt like he needed to go to church. He didn't know what to say. He didn't really know about Jesus. Um, but then like his dad also was con just converted two months before, and they started going to church. He started reading the Bible and getting to know God. And he was talking about, like, um, you know, uh, like, the we, God has all these promises for us. 
And if, if we don't know scripture, if we don't know our faith, we're not going to know those promises. And when Jesus was tempted in the desert by the devil, you know, how did the, how did the devil tempt him? Through scripture, but through the wrong interpretation of scripture, you know? And, but Jesus rebuked him and, and corrected him with the right interpretation of scripture. So it's so important to know scripture, to know God's promises for us, to know what God says, us, what God says about us. You know, so if we don't know scripture, we can get easily get tricked by the devil. We can easily get fooled by the devil. And so it's so important to, to, know, to know God and to build that friendship, build that intimacy. But not read scripture as if it's just like, you know, a history book, but really to pray it to be in his presence. And um, from there, I kid you not, like, my, that was just, that was about like a year ago. And I, I was like, I made a commitment again to start reading scripture every day, at least two or like three chapters a night or so. Um, some nights I'd read like some short psalms or so because I, I, uh, I didn't plan well. But I, I just made that a habit of reading scripture. And I found, you know, um, when I was younger and single and didn't have kids, I was, I was always making it to adoration. I was always praying um, in, in the church, making it to adoration. Uh, but, like, you know, having kids and, and um, just work and everything, I, I wasn't going to adoration as much. But I found that being, spending time with Jesus in Scripture, that was like my adoration time, you know? That, that's Christ. God... God you know, we're called to love God. It says love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, right? With all your strength is your body. And but how does God love us? He loves us the same way. He loves us. With, he gives his, his, his mind to us. The, the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. And you look, you look at scripture as, as the mind, his mind, his thoughts for us. Then he also gives his body to us, right? He gives his body to us in, in the body in blood, at the Holy Mass, at the Eucharist. But he also gives us his heart to us, his Holy Spirit, his spirit of love. He, that's, a, that's how God loves us. He loves us fully. So, like, I mean, maybe you can't make it to adoration all the time or so, but you could be with Christ in, in Scripture. You could be with Christ in the Eucharist. You could be with Christ, um, Holy Spirit, meditating upon that. Sitting in your room and just praying and being in his presence, you know, tr trusting that he's there with you. The, the Bible says that, we're, you know, we're living tabernacles. The church teaches that too, you know, and we're living tabernacles. Christ is in us. Christ in us is a hope of glory. And it says that we are his righteousness in Christ. We're righteous. We're made holy. Not because of us, but because of God, because of his goodness, because of what he's done for us. Not because we're worthy, because God is worthy. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, like, meditating upon that, meditating upon that, trusting in that, coming to experience God. God wants us to experience him. It can't just be head knowledge, like, oh, yeah, I know. He wants us to experience that closest, that friendship. Think of your closest friend, the closest person. It could be your spouse, it could be your girlfriend, it could be your friend, it could be your parents, your children. God wants, that, wants you to experience that closest with him. He wants you, you know, to know him that way. Um, I liked what Vijay said. She was like, well, she said, welcome home. You're safe here. That was prophetic. That was the Lord speaking. Welcome home. Welcome home. And, and, and that, I don't think that was just to one person, but that's to all of us. We're home. This is our home here with Christ with, and our brothers and sisters. And we are safe here. We're safe here. Um, I'll get that. You know, like, uh, uh, I pray for people on the streets a lot. And um, just a few, share a few testimonies. Uh, man, we, we've been going out evangelizing, street evangelizing. I'm not gonna, it's not the only way to evangelize. It's not the way, street evangelism is not the only way to evangelize. The best way is through our everyday relationships, loving the people around you, loving the people who God calls you um, to minister to, and just letting the Lord fill you and just 
and just to overflow, overflow. Let the Lord fill you with his grace, with his love, with his joy, with his peace, and overflow in that. And where, you know, we're called to be, we're called to be, Lord fills us up. We're, we're not called to keep it to ourselves and be a lake, right? We're called to just, it says like rivers of living water. Livers of living water, like, the, like a wellspring just overflowing. We're called to what God gives us to, 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 to let it flow from us to the people around us. To people, his grace, his love, his joy to the people around us. That's the, one of the best ways to evangelize. But I will say it is awesome going street evangelizing. And I just highly encourage you guys to come out, come and see. Like it's, you know... Um, it's one way to be with God out there. Whoo! You know, you know the, the the you guys know the story the ninety nine, the lost sheep, the the hundred sheep, and if, if one sheep is lost, and you'll leave the ninety nine in the desert, right? And how the shepherd will go out to find the lost sheep. And so, you know, some of us might think, oh, I was, you know, I was that lost sheep, or no, I'm that ninety nine. You know, I'm not lost no more. But how do you know that, like, like, maybe God's calling us to partner with him? <sighs> to come, come, come be that shepherd and help find that lost sheep. You know, and he says when he finds that lost sheep, he puts it on his shoulders and he comes home rejoicing. And it says that heaven rejoices over one sinner. Heaven rejoices. Is there anywhere in the Bible where it says heaven rejoices? You know, over one sinner, because that's God's heart. God's heart is for that one person, is, that, is for you, is for our brothers, for our sisters, for those who don't know Christ. He died for, for all, all, all of us. He gave his life, he bled for all of us. And so it's so awesome to be with God in finding the lost sheep and partnering, like uh, partnering intentionally partnering with the Lord to find the lost sheep. And so going out, it's so great to go out evangelizing because it just really gets you out of your comfort zone. You know, it's like, yeah, it could be scary sometimes, but because you never know what's going to happen, right? But that's how our faith grows. When we step out into the unknown and the Lord catches us. The Lord catches us. The Lord shows up. The Lord shows up again, right? And you're sharing the faith. You're speaking to some stranger who doesn't know about God or who, who fell away from the faith. And you're, sh you're encouraging them. You're welcoming them, welcome, welcoming them home. <laughs> you're welcoming them home. I say that like I'll, I'll pray over people and I'll, I'll get that. The Lord says, you know, you belong. I'll pray for them. And it's like you belong. I, I, I get that. Like the Lord wanted me to tell you that, that you belong, that you have a place, you have a home. Um, yeah, it was amazing. We went out street evangelizing this past Wednesday. And we went, I'll tell you a little bit. Two weeks ago we went, um, and Nick was there. We went to La Jolla Shores. It was a little slow that day. I was, you know, trying to say we, we, we prayed for a few people. It was a little slow. And then the, the next Wednesday, Peggy and I went out there. And, you know, next, you know, we're praying for just, it just felt like it was nonstop. It was so awesome. And we're like, we got to bring more people next time. And so we set up a thing to go out evangelizing last Friday. And for some reason, it was like, hey, do you need prayer? And a lot of rejections. And it was a lot, a little, a lot of, it was, a, it was pretty slow speak, like, like praying for people and speaking to people. But we prayed, we prayed for a few people. And we prayed for a guy who had knee pain. It was a 8 out of 10, and his, his knee was healed. And it was just, but it was just so much fun out there. It was awesome. We were praising. VJ was out there. We were all praising on a little bonfire. So we're going to have that again sometime. And I just I hope you all can make it because it's just a fun time out there. Um, but then I went out this past Wednesday, and it was, it was amazing. It was crazy. I, I thought no one was going to show up. But there was a girl who, her name was Jennifer. She used to go to this parish, but she's still on the email list. And she was in town for some reason for her bridal shower. She moved to um, uh, Michigan because she's getting married. But she randomly came to go evangelizing. And we went to Embarcadero. And it just seemed like, man, we prayed for, there was a lot of divine 
like deep encounters where just of just speaking with people, sharing the faith with them, sharing the gospel with them, praying with them, you know, encouraging them, welcoming them. Um, one of the guys we spoke to, his name was Leo. He was a uh, he, he was from Chicago, and his mom was Buddhist, and he really didn't have any faith, you know. And I got to share with him about the gospel. I shared about how God like loves them, like. You know, I try um, to simplify it. You know, if you're going to say one sentence to a person, you had one punchline, like just one line to say to a person, they had to go, what would you say? What would you tell them about the gospel? God, yeah, God loves them. Come on. That God loves them. That God's for them. That God wants the best for them that God's with them, that he cares, right? That he wants a relationship with them, you know? And that's our faith. That's our faith, that God loves us and is with us, Emmanuel, you know? And so um, I was sharing that with, uh, with Leo, and we got to pray with him. And, you know, we asked him, like, uh, you know, at the end, he didn't have any ailments or any pain or anything. He was fine, but we just asked him how he felt. And he's like, oh, I, f- I feel peace. And I was like, I feel lighter. I was like, that's, that's, that's a peace of Christ. That's a peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding. That's a peace. That's, that's from the Prince of Peace. Come on. <laughs> that's the Prince of Peace right there. You know, you can't, you can't buy peace. You can't buy peace. You can't take a pill and receive peace. You can't read and study and and gain peace. Peace comes from the Prince of Peace, from Jesus. God who created us, God who is life, who is love, who is joy, who is hope, who is peace. He can only give us rest. He can only give us what our hearts desire because we are made for God. We are made for love. It says that God is love. And you carry his presence. You carry his love. You're a walking, living tabernacle. You carry his Holy Spirit, his spirit of love. And you can release his love upon people. You can release his peace upon people. Whoo, come on. Come on. Come on. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than sharing the gospel. There's nothing better. And let me tell you, like, when you, when you share the gospel, you're just like, it's like this great joy, this immense joy. And you're like, Lord, I'm not worthy. I'm a sinner. You feel that way. You feel that way. Lord, I, I mess up too. Like, I'm not worthy to share your good news. It's, it's so awesome. It's my drug. It's my drug. Sharing God's love is my drug. And, and so we, we shared that with them. We were sharing that, the, the, talking about the Prince of Peace. We gave him a Bible. We gave him a gospel card that explained the gospel of why Jesus suffered and died for us, how we can have eternal life with him. Not just when we die, but now, eternal life now, life into the full now. You know, eternal life is a relationship with God, that friendship with God. And you can experience that now, life into the full now, not just when you die. But now, whoo, come on. Uh, and I'll t- uh, so we, that, was, that was Leo, but there was three more that we, we spoke to other people. There was, we spoke to other people, but there was like three other deep encounters we had. There was a guy named Drew, a young guy in his 20s. And, uh, and we were just pretty much sharing the same message and talking about the, I felt the Lord was like putting that on me about just, you know, you can't buy peace. You can't read about peace. You can't pop a pill for peace. That's what the world says, you know, with all this new age stuff. Yeah, you see, but you can't. It comes from the Prince of Peace. And so I was, I was sharing that message with him, and he was, he was feeling it. He was like, oh, man. And we prayed for him, and um, we prayed for him, and he, he, he was really open. And I, I felt the Lord tell me, like, like adventure. The word, I got the word adventure. And as I was praying, I said adventure. He, like, looked up at me. He was like, you know, I was like, the Lord, he just wants to have an adventure with you. He's fun. 
the Lord's fun. He wants to have fun with you. He wants an adventure with you. And he, it really touched his heart, you know? Because it's a lot of times that we're lied to. We think, like, our faith is supposed to be boring, right? It's supposed to, there's not supposed to be adventure or fun, but it's the greatest adventure. It's the greatest adventure. Sharing the gospel is the greatest adventure. There's nothing greater, guys. Um, and so that was, that was awesome. Then we prayed for another guy. His name was Jason. We were about to, we are like, leaving and stuff. But then um, we're like, oh, yeah, can you take a picture of us? And, and we asked him if he needed prayer. He's like, oh, no, I'm fine. I feel, I feel, you know, I don't have any pain or ailments. It's like, but I also asked, like, yeah, we, we okay, this is, this is my opening. Well, I'll pray for you. Hey, I'm part of a group that prays for people. Do you need prayer? Can we pray for you? And it's just like, and you know, we also pray for healing. Do you have any pain or ailments, or do you su- suffer from anxiety? So many people are suffering from anxiety, from fear and depression. Anxiety and depression are linked together, you know? And we also pray for healing for that. And so once I said anxiety, he's like, yeah, actually, you know. And I, we were praying for him, and I was just releasing the peace of Christ. And you see him, he's just like, you know, he's, he's lighting up. The Lord was lighting him up. And he wasn't, you know, spiritual. He wasn't, like, really. But we got to share with him. We got to share with him the gospel. We got to give him a Bible and encourage him. Encourage him. Encourage him. It was, it was amazing. You know, like, you kind of you have to go after it. God wants to touch people. God pe- wants to touch people through you, through your life. He wants to touch people. He wants to heal people. He wants people to know that they're loved through you. It might be a word. It might be through a hug. It might be through a smile. You know? But, like, we have to make ourselves available. We have to kind of push ourselves and get out of our comfort zones and get out of ourselves and push ourselves and step out and go after his glory. Come on. That's what I, th- that's what I think. I'm just like, Lord, I'm, I want to do it for your glory. I want to just go after it for your glory, for your glory. That's what pushes me to step out. Even if I could be wrong, I, I was, um, cause so growing, you know, God, God loves us, you know, and he wants to demonstrate his love for us. He, he doesn't want to just, it doesn't want to just be a message without any power, with nothing behind it. He wants to demonstrate it with his power, with his presence. And so, um, like, he wants to demonstrate it. And so to grow in the prophetic, to grow in healing, to grow in prophes- prophesying, you, you, like there's three parts. There's three parts. It's first the knowledge of it, like learning, like the theology, the scripture, why, the how, the how to do it, right? The second part is that intimacy with God, that friendship with God, growing in that intimacy with God, spending time with him in scripture, being with him, growing in love with him. The third part is activation, is going after it, is going after it, and like stepping out and praying for people, praying for people. I, the only reason why I've seen more healings is not because, you know, I have the same anointing as you do, but the thing is, I, I'm used to going out. Actually, I, I kind of I kinda have an advantage because I'm used to evangelizing. I have a background in street evangelizing and, and speaking to random people. But that, that's why I'm saying, come out with me. Come out with me. Get out of your comfort zone so you can get used to praying for people. Because the more you pray for people, the more you're going to see God show up and move and touch and heal people through you. Heal people through you. And so, um, what was it? So, yeah, growing, growing the prophetic is you have to go off after it. And so one thing I'm not, like, I'm still, I'm, I'm still growing in all of it. You know, I've seen pain leave. I've seen knees and elbows. You know, I'm still praying for, you know, blind eyes to be open and people, crippled people to walk. Um, I was up in Hollywood this past weekend. Um, and <laughs> it was awesome. We were, for 4th of July, there was a group. A concert, but I was like evangelizing on the Hollywood Strip. Come on, with Spider Man, right? <laughs> and Freddy Kr- Freddy Krueger was there with his, you know, claws. You know, those are the people. You know, take come take a picture with me. And so I was out there. I had this big Jesus flag. I had this big, <laughs> just a big conversation starter. And uh, you know, people who'd comment on me like, "Hey, I'm praying for people. Do you need prayer?" 
and I, I was I prayed for a few people out there, um, um, but there was, you know, there was this, there was two crippled people I prayed for in, in wheelchairs, you know, and I, I was believing for a miracle, but you know I didn't, I didn't see them get up, you know, um, but I was going after it, even though I didn't see them go up. I might have to look like a fool or so and ask and what's called, but I just going after it, going after it. Um, and, but I'm just still believing, I'm still believing, I'm still believing, and I'm still going to go after, I'm still going to pray for people. Um, and then uh, I was at church just the other day, and I wanted to, like, I was, like, asking the Lord for, like, words of knowledge, you know, um, for the lady kind of in front of me, she were in mass and stuff, and I was like, Lord, tell me something about her, you know? So what's your heart for, for this, la- this person? And the Lord was saying that, I felt the Lord saying that, um, you know, she, her, uh, her, her she, she wanted to pray for her son. Her concern was her, for her son. You pray for her son. And like, Lord, what else do you want to say for her? That, you know, that she's precious. And some other encouraging stuff, other stuff that she want, you know, that I felt the Lord saying. But there was also this other thing, like, Lord, where, where does she need, does she have pain or ailments? And um, I got, like, her lower back. And so I asked her after Mass, I was like, hey, you know, do, like, I know this is kind of weird and random, but, like, do you have lower back pain, like, on your right side, lower side? And she's like, no, why? I was like, I, I got that wrong, you know? I, I got that wrong. But then, like, she said, I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then, like, uh, she did, like, I asked her about her son. Are you concerned about your son and stuff? And she's like, yeah, you know, actually... She was concerned about her other child, but then she realized, oh, yeah, my son, too, you know? And then we, I was like, and then, and then I was like, and then I just told her, I felt the Lord tell me, you know, and I said what exactly, like, kind of what he was saying. I felt like, you know, I forget exactly what it was, but it was encouraging stuff, and it really touched her heart, you know? So I got, like, two out of the three right, you know, and I, was just, I had to pray with her. And um, it was crazy because it was such a divine appointment because, you know, she was so touched. She was like, oh, my gosh. Wow. Like, like, and we were praying with each other. It was so beautiful. And she was saying, like, you know, a couple months ago, I went, like, I felt, like she said something, I felt like the Holy Spirit or something. And, I, you know, and I asked my priest about it. And he just was like, oh, no, that's fake. That doesn't happen. And it crushed her heart. It was something like that. It just, like, it just, not exactly like that, but it just crushed her heart. She's like, oh, my gosh. And I'm like, I encourage her, no. Like, that, that's real. There's real. You know, that there's, the Holy Spirit's real. That's, you know, I, I told her about St. Vincent and stuff, you know, and how we're moving. I told her about Encounter Ministries and moving and the prophetic. I got her contact. But it was just like pressing, pressing in, going after it, going after God's glory, trying to listen to him in your every day, in your every day. So um, those are just a few stories. And so like God wants to do a new thing. These are recent stories. These, this was just like, when was this when I prayed for that? That was, that was I think that was yesterday, Thursday. Wait, today is Friday? Yeah, that was just that la- yesterday, that lady. And the other one was on, on Wednesday. Um, these are real. God wants to do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing. Go after that new thing. Right? Go after that new thing. God wants to touch somebody. He wants to heal somebody through you. Step out. Don't worry if you might look like a fool. You might get it right. You might get it wrong, but you stepped out. You li- listen to the Lord. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit. Well, Lord, you want me to do that? Okay, I'm going. I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask that person if they need prayer. Whoo. <laughs> ah, amen. Amen. So how many of you guys would like to, like, like, go out more and share, like, and just... And just be more bold, right? Come on. You know, I know that God has given me that boldness. So, you know, if you just want to just put your hands out and just receive and close your eyes, I'm just going to impart that boldness that God has given me. given me. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Shayara Sati Rababa Shia Rababa. You're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy. You're so beautiful, Lord. Yes, Lord, you're in this place. We praise you, Lord. I just feel the Lord, just He's just smiling upon us. He's so He's so proud of you guys. Not because of anything you've done, but just that you're his little children. You're his. You belong to him. Whoo. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you to close your eyes and just picture Jesus in his glory. In his glory, the risen Jesus. The risen Jesus. Him smiling at you. Praise you, Jesus. You're so worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you believe in us. I just feel him saying that. I I believe in you guys. I believe I've chosen you. I've anointed you. You have my spirit. You have my spirit. I am with you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come, set us on fire. Come, Holy Spirit, set us on fire. Set us on fire, Lord. We're desperate for you, Lord. We're desperate for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just impart the boldness that God has given me. He's saying, go. I'm always with you. I'm always with you. I just see his joy just fill in this room. Yes, Lord, more, more, more of your joy. More of your joy filling the room. Fill the room. Yes, Lord, you are our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise you, Jesus. Just see you guys just embracing, being just like, held in his arms he's just cuddling holding you so tight his gentleness his love is so good his love is so good thank you Jesus See him giving you, he's giving you his heart for souls. More of your love, Lord, more of your heart. And just impart the gift of evangelization that he's given me to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just see some of you guys just reaching the people around you, your friends. Just that joy is just so magnetic, is so attractive. The joy of the Lord is so attractive. And they're just like, you're radiating, you're shining. It's just natural. It's just natural sharing God's love, his gospel. Praise you, Jesus. You're so worthy, Lord. We honor you. We bless you. We praise you, God. You're so holy. Yeah, 
I just, you could just rest in his presence, rest in his arms, rest in his arms. Expose the blessed sacrament and just continue resting.